Today, let's see how this vertical beam is done in Unreal. It's a pretty cool effect where you will learn a bunch of cool tricks and as usual we made quite a few variations as you can see. And since it is quite complex we are going to show you a simplified version which is a good basis for you to get started. We made all of these variations available on the marketplace and on my Patreon's page too, links below, where you will get access to a huge library of visual effects for Unreal and Unity. So without further ado let's jump right into this. So for this vertical beam let's start with the Niagara system. An empty one and then we will add emitters as we go. Rename it, double click to open it up and with right click we can add an empty emitter for the mesh core which is basically the cylinder at the center that is very bright. So down here on the sprite renderer we can remove it and replace it with the mesh renderer where we are going to assign this cylinder right here. If you open up Blender I can quickly show you how to create one. Essentially we want an empty scene and in add we want to add a sander. On this left bottom panel we want to say the cap fill type is nothing so it is essentially only a ring with no top and bottom faces and with tab we can enter neat mode select everything with A and with G we want to move this up only in Z a value of 1. We are doing this so the pivot is at the bottom and we can scale it up from the bottom. Let's use Shade Smooth in Object. So it becomes smooth, rename this to Sander Toot for example and with the Sander selected on file let's go to Export, FBX, turn on Selected Objects, navigate to your project, rename this and export it. So once you have assigned the Sander to the Mesh Render we can enable Material Override, add a new one and let's use one that comes with Unreal because we just want to make this very bright. So I'm going to use Gnomon Alpha and now let's make sure we spawn something, right? So on the emitter update let's add a spawn burst instantaneous. This is what we have at this point and well let's improve for example lifetime could be shorter like 3 and let's already take care of the color. We want to make this bright like 50 on the R, 17 for the G and 9 for the B. And then very importantly on the mesh scale mode let's say it's non-uniform so we can stretch it on the Z by a value of 15 for example. This is how tall it's gonna be. I'm gonna use 15 and it's already super bright looking good. Now let's take care of the way this animates. We can do it with a scale mesh size. But it's much more useful if we convert this to a vector. So we can have each axis and then for example convert the X to a curve and basically X and Y will kind of add a wobble. That's why we created this curve right here which by the way took some time so we skipped that part but you can copy. As a matter of fact I highly recommend you to test different curves and see the feeling it gives you. But essentially X and Y will control its radius right and it will kind of add a nice wobble if we add this curve. What's very important is that the Z, which is also going to be a curve, it grows basically. So for example, the first key is going to be 0 and the last key we can push it to 0 0.1 and say it's 1 in terms of value. So it grows very rapidly in the beginning and then we can select these curves and say they are in auto mode and fix these handles. So it grows really quick in the beginning as you can see and then it kind of wobbles a little bit and it shrinks. That's the feeling we are aiming for. Feel free to take some time and test different curves, it will make a lot of difference because now once you have that part done we are going to duplicate this mesh core emitter and call it the mesh outside Freno. It's gonna have a Freno in a moment. And the first thing we want to do is increase its radius to something like 4 for the X and Y. Here we go, it's super bright, yes indeed, let's take care of that. We are gonna create a very quick Freno, basic Freno. So right click, new material, yes indeed, rename it and double click to open it up and the blend mode it's gonna be additive. With that we can now for example search for a vector parameter so we can control its color and then a freno. We can multiply these two together so we can influence the color of the freno. I'm creating multiply nodes with M by the way, M and click. Let's connect this to the emissive color first. And this is going to be multiplied by something, the particle color, which essentially allows us to control the color of the Fresnel directly in Niagara. 
We also want to control how much Fresnel we want, basically its thickness. So let's create a scalar and call it the Fresnel power with a default value of 2 and connect to the exponential in. Now let's take care of the color, increase its white value. Let's press OK so we can see something. I'm just going to decrease the base reflect fraction and that's it. We can save this material and then create a new instance. I prefer to use instance instead of the original material. And now let's go back to Niagara and our mesh outside Fresnel, it's going to have this material that we created. And this is what we get. So it's going to be really bright on the edges, essentially. So yeah, I'm going to increase its brightness to a lot, like 2250. Here we go, we got something. Looking nice. And then it closes. Very nice. Let's add a few more layers. For example, let's duplicate the mesh outside Fresnel and call it the mesh outside dark. It's going to be basically a dark background so we can have a really nice contrast with all of these bright elements. On the mesh renderer, we need to switch the material to the GNOME Alpha that comes with Unreal. And well, in initialized particle, it's going to be basically almost a black color, but we are going to give it a little bit of dark purple. This is the values we have used. And this one can be a tiny bit smaller in terms of radius, like 3.9. Exactly. And we need to make sure it renders behind everything. So on the mesh renderer, down here on the rendering, we can say the sort order int is minus 1. This is what we have in isolation mode. Show everything else, this is what we get. Looking good. Alright, let's add another layer. Let's duplicate this outside dark. And call it mesh outside Voronoi. Because now we are going to need a Voronoi. So let's create a new material. Call it the M underscore Voronoi. Double click to open it up. And let's make this by parts. For example, let's start with the blend mode. It's going to be masked. So we can basically erode this mesh according to a texture. And that texture, we need the parameter to D. You can call it the main text. And let's already make sure we can control the color of this via Niagara. So let's create a particle color and multiply these two together. Connect to the emissive color and the R to the opacity mask. As you can see with the default texture, we already have some erosion. Let's replace this texture with the Voronoi, which is available for free on the link below, by the way. This texture, go grab it. Now let's see how it looks directly in Niagara. I'm going to create a new instance, because I prefer to use instance. <laughs> and then in Niagara, on the mesh renderer, we can replace this with the MI underscore Voronoi. And this is what we get. As you can see, it's already eroding, and we are going to control a few more things. For example, let's already take care of the color. Let's say it's 500, 5, and then 0. It's going to be super bright. And this one is going to be a tiny bit bigger, like 4.2 for the X and the Y. Super cool. Look at this. All right, let's make a few more improvements. For example, we can use the dynamic parameter node, rename the first one to erosion, and the second one to power. What we can do is pick the RGB, connect it to a power node, replace this connection and this second parameter of the dynamic parameter can control that value and it's awesome because we can directly in Niagara control it for example if you go back to Niagara the way we control this is with the dynamic material parameters and still with this dynamic parameter node we can control the erosion for example by multiplying this with the R value and replacing the connection to the opacity mask and now we can play with this node and it will control how much Voronoi we dissolve. For example, the power and the erosion will, well, control how much erode we want. And that's the neat part of this trick. Let's make a few more improvements. For example, it would be cool if you could control the tiling and we could make this pan, basically scroll. So let's add another dynamic parameter. But it's very important that we increase the parameter index to 1. Because parameter index of 0 is already used in the other dynamic parameter. Now let's rename this to text or tiling x, and the second one is going to be for the tiling in the y. Default values of 1, by the way. And the way this works is first we need to append these two together, basically create a vector with the x and the y, and then multiply these with a texture coordinate. And the texture coordinate is basically the UVs of the mesh. We multiply these two together and we can connect it to the main texture, to the UVs. 
If we go back to Niagara, the way this works now is by turning on another index. The first one, the zero one, is already used. The second one is now for the tiling, which, for example, we can say it's one and one, or we can play with these and stretch these however we want, as you can see. The values that we think look great are, for example, 5 in the X and 0 0.3 in the Y. Very stretched, yes indeed, because now it's going to move. So, still on this dynamic parameter node, the index 2 can be for the speed X and the index 3 can be for the speed Y, with default values of 0 and 0. And every time we need to animate something, most likely we are going to need a time node. Let's create two multiply nodes by holding M and then clicking with left mouse button. And now we can multiply the speed Y down here and the speed X down here to the B option of each multiply. The A option is going to be for the time. And now once again we need to append, but this time many. We could use an append normal, by the way. And then we only need to add these two together. And as you can see, now we get movement. And it's very cool when you animate this something like 0 0.7 on the X and 1 on the Y. Alright, looking good, that's the hardest part. Now we can add another layer. For example, this is the orange one, let's duplicate this for a blue. With this color, more or less. 40, 70 and 500. And it's going to be a tiny, tiny bit bigger as well. And we can adjust the erosion to 0 0.7. The tiling as well and the speed. This is the values that we think look great. Obviously, I highly recommend it to test out different values. But that's essentially it for the core of this effect. One last thing that I can quickly show you is how to add some stretched particles. I'm gonna add an empty meter down here, rename it with F2 to stretched particles. I'm gonna isolate and since it's an empty meter, on the emitter spawn, for this case we can use the spawn rate. We get a warning saying we need the emitter state and we can click fix issue. Niagara will automatically fix that. And we can say the spawn rate is 30. We also need these particles to have a short lifetime. On initialized particle we can say it's random between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. That should do it. And yeah, they are all spawning in the same position. So let's take care of that. In the particle spawn, let's add a shape location. But instead of being a sphere, let's switch to a torus. Let's try 600 more or less for the large radius. 650, 550, we'll see. And now, yeah, let's make the move by adding velocity on the particle spawn. Click fix issue. And into the Z, let's bump this up to 5000. That should do it, definitely. And here we go. We have some particles going up. We can stretch them now by simply going to the initialized particle and saying the sprite size mode is random, non-uniform. Let's squeeze them in the X, something like 10 and 20, and in the Y, let's stretch it 150, 200, that should do it. Just to give you an idea how this can be done, it looks like it's alright, but there's one thing missing on the sprite render. Let's make sure they are aligned with our velocity, and that's it. Oh yeah, and then you can play with the color, make sure it's something bright that looks nice, you know. Not too bright. But you get the idea. And what I can still show is an overview of what we added. For example, we then added some debris. It's an easy 3D model like this one. And it really adds a nice touch, like if it was ripping off the ground. And then we also added debris at the bottom and particles, stretched particles at the bottom as well. And there should be a connection between the ground and the vertical beam. So we added this kind of cone going really fast. Yeah, it really adds that nice touch to the vertical beep. And finally, we added some ground cracks and ground marks, like if it was burnt. They were done with Material Maker, by the way. And that's it, you get the idea. Obviously, we created a bunch of variations from this. We really have a great pack here. In my opinion, it's all available on the Marketplace. I'll have the link below and you will get these awesome variations. We also added this to the Patreons page where you can also get a bunch of other projects if you decide to support us. And talking about patrons, I want to say thank you to each one that supported last month. 
And a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageres, Alan Alston, Andre Ripa, David Molina, Diego Marques, Lua Ama, Eric, Phoenix, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Ivan Jacobi, Casey Miller, Leandro Di Ricio, Leon Olt, Matt Morn, Matthew Parker, Mihaita Nastase, Mike Bell, Oitsk Owen, Osum Safuele, Pay Easy, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Shan Aguilar, Barry Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Boylian, Vlad, Minja Kim, and Sang Yang Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.